Good evening and welcome to my humble model railway at Bedstead Junction. Uh, tonight we'll be looking at a couple of things. I've, I've been out buying and uh, it's now Saturday night, Saturday the uh, 8th of May uh, and it's about uh, 20 past 9 at night so getting quite getting a bit late now. Uh, this has been probably the first time I've been able to sit down and have a proper go at making this uh, this particular video for you. Now we're going to be talking about a few things then. Uh, the first thing is uh, my poor little controller, my um, Model D Gauge Master controller went pop. Uh, that was my fault. I did something silly which I won't go into too far into. Um, it was with, with the locomotive. I shouldn't have been running on there. I knew it was faulty and it seems to have made, it seems to have damaged the controller. But um, what I've had to do, I've, I've bought a replacement controller and we can have a look at this tonight. Be part of my um, purchasing. Gauge Master Analog GMC Combi Single Track Controller with Plug-in Transformer. Okay. Now that's the information on the back of the box there. Okay. Made in the UK. Good stuff. Now, the transformer is, is quite a large transformer. I, I won't show you that tonight, but that's actually... Uh, Plugs it plugs in obviously into the sockets and then uh, the controller um, is just on its own so the power transformer is part of what plugs into the socket similar to a Hornby um, unit so really that's the only thing that's on my desk now on the actual layout okay now another thing that I've been buying as well is a DVD members of the Cheddar Valley branch the strawberry line you now the lovely little pannier tank there in this in the, one of the stations. Members of the Cheddar Valley branch of the Strawberry Line. I bought that from Wolverton Rail. Okay, so that's where you need to go if you want to buy. So certainly if you want to get wanted to get it from the same place as I did. I we really talking about this um but my controller tonight and, and this DVD because everything that you're going to be seeing in front of you will be thinking well what's it all about uh, why, why are there three diesel vehicles and only one steam one and it's because we're, um, this DVD was actually well a lot, a lot of the archive footage a lot of the footage uh, relates to a time when the um, dieselization was in full swing and you were going to be start, and you were starting to see the warships and the westerns and in fact they, they do actually feature in this video which is why they're actually on this layout now the rail cars they actually were, were on this uh, layout as well on, on the actual strawberry line um, for passenger duties and um, we're going to have a look at this one in action now and also what we're going to do is we're going to see what the controller's like so we'll gradually just turn her off a little bit Let's see if we can get her going the other way, I think. That's it. I want to go this way towards us. Look at that. Look at that. How's that, how's that for control? Gradually, sort of gradually gather up speed as we go. And this is a Lima rail car. Now, Lima stopped making uh, modern railway items in uh, around about nine, 2004 was when they stopped. And uh, Lima is now actually owned by Hornby, at least, at least the name Lima is owned, owned by Hornby. Uh, Lima was an Italian company, and this is one of their, one of their many offerings which they uh, gave to us uh, for the British buyer. And I bought this one, oh gosh, got to be in the mid 1990s, I would have thought. And, it's, and it's, uh, it, so it's obviously one of my pre-lockdown purchases. And you can see it's running quite nicely around the layout. There. It's in the BR Green livery. Now, they were originally, I think they were brought in on, on uh, the GWR in the 1930s. And they were used a lot on the, uh, the Birmingham to Cardiff run. Um, the first, I think probably the first um, major diesel uh, rail car that was used on the GWR. If I'm wrong about that, then please uh, forgive me and, and let me know if there were uh, earlier ones. 
Uh, now, there, there were two versions. This is the later, more angular version. Uh, there is another version which you can buy, and I think Dapple did it. Um, and they were nicknamed Flying Bananas. They're a little bit more rounded in shape. And uh, the Flying Banana was a nickname which they got. But these are uh, more uh, angular in shape. As you can see, it's quite a good runner. Uh, this literally came down out, out of the attic and with a, a few squirts of wall and it came straight back onto, onto my railway again. Which I uh, restarted um, in the beginning of the lockdown in, in the spring of 2020. And I've been uh, making various videos ever since. The CRDs are rail car. Now, the one thing which um, actually borne in mind about these rail cars is that they were limited in the number of passen passengers they can carry. And in the video, you'll see a story related by one of the railway men about how one of these was actually seriously reloaded with passengers um, for, a, for an excursion to Western Supermare. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, it could barely pull away. It was how, how overcrowded it was. But the, these uh, rail cars, in fact, gave very great service on, on the line. On the Cheddar Valley line. Now, steam locomotives, as far as they were concerned, uh, there were pannier tanks, as you saw on the front cover of the uh, DVD there. And there were prairie tanks used on this line. And there were, um, latterly, uh, IVAT 262Ts, which we're going to be seeing tonight in IVAT. I don't think we'll get my IVAT tank out very often as well, so we'll get a chance to have a look at that in, in a few moments. So what we're going to do is we're going to run our diesel rail car in, in, in and then we're going to get our IVAT uh, 262T out and have a quick look at it. Now we're going to slow right down, you can see, go right down there, and you can see the, the actual um, control you can get. Now, good control is essential on a layout like mine because the, the sidings literally, if if I make a, a, a serious error, um, the train is going to go right off the siding and, and out onto the floor. So, it's a great benefit to me to have a controller of, of this quality. Now, we're going to watch this one go into the station, and uh, perhaps you can imagine. I mean, because we have to use a little bit of imagination with modern railways, that this is pulling into the bay platform at Yatton, okay, and then uh, it will be connecting with a main line service uh, to take either commuters into Bristol, maybe, or maybe to, um, going to take uh, some people on excursions to places like Western Supermare or further down the line to other uh, West Country seaside resorts. Okay, so we're going to pull her, pull her into the station now, and we can see how, how it all goes. Now that is perfection. I was able to stop the train right on the platform there, no problem at all. So we're happy passengers and guests out now and get their connecting train uh, with, with, with the main line. Now the next train you're going to see is the IVAT uh, 262T. Um, I think they were the, the last of the steam locomotives to be used on the on this particular line. And uh, the, the DVD which, we, which we're referring to actually does actually show the last uh, strawberry special being, uh, being loaded up. Now we're going to have to have a little change of, a change of battery. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch things over and hopefully you won't actually see the joints. So we'll just do a quick change of battery. If you just excuse me for a moment. Right, so sorry if there's, there's a short lack of continuity there, but I had to just uh, change the battery of the camera. Um, I'm relatively new to this. Uh, this is the new camera, which I'm using here tonight. It's my uh, Canon M10. Uh, sorry, not an M10, it's the M50. Please bear with me. Uh, the Canon M50 is a replacement for my um, M10, and uh, I'm just getting used to, used to obviously filming. And then one of the things I, I needed to do obviously before I started making this film was to make sure the battery was fully charged. But then we won't go too far into that now. Now we're going to be moving on to our next train, and we're just going to have a quick change of points.
and again we'll have a look and see how this particular locomotive uh, responds to uh, our controller look at that I'm impressed that, that level of control is just absolutely superb And then what we're going to be pulling away, you'll see, see us pulling away there. And this level of control is helping me really with my filming here. Really good level of control now. So we've got our IVA 262T. Let's bring her down and have a closer look, shall we? There we are. Now. I think Ivert was the last uh, locomotive designer for the Midland Railway. But then when uh, British Rail uh, came into effect in 1948, his uh, designs were used, I think, for the standard class 2 tank, uh, which is a, I think is identical to this, or virtually identical. Again, correct me if I'm wrong on that. But then, um, but these uh, were used a lot on British Rail. And they did find their way into the western region of British Rail, and um, certainly onto the onto the Cheddar Valley uh, branch. Now the vehicle you can see just behind it is a fruit van. Now I don't have a many fruit vans, so this is the only one I've got to to give a representation of what kind of vehicle may have been used on there. Uh, you will need to look at the video again. I, I've I've watched it well, once or twice. You can see the actual fruit vans being loaded up in in, in the DVD. Uh, at a, a place like Draycott Station and then behind it is uh, two coaches so we've got a, a kind of a mixed train really a mixed sort of freight and passenger train tonight and again we can imagine this uh, one having picked up a crop of strawberries maybe and now we're heading off to Yatton Station Now it was def de definitely uh, sort of very, very sort of um, a, a great time of change, let's say, in uh, the British Railways, uh, the 1960s. Uh, you had uh, a few things happening. Uh, one was uh, from the late 1950s, certainly on the uh, western region of British Rail, the modernisation plan was uh, in, in full force, and you were beginning to see diesel locomotives. Uh, steam locomotives were used uh, right up until uh, on the line, right up until the end of the line in 1963. Uh, I think there were others, uh, uh, there was a steam special which is featured, which is uh, later on on there, which is uh, a, a diesel train which was used, a uh, diesel multiple unit for the steam, for the special. Uh, it wasn't a steam special, it was a, it was a diesel, a diesel train. And uh, that was in 1969. Uh, I think the uh, line with them was finally ripped up after that. In fact, uh, regular traffic stopped in 1963, so it was um, pre-beaching on the Strawberry Line. But uh, then a, a few specials were run over the line um, up until uh, 1969, and then after then, I think the line uh, almost certainly disappeared. In fact, um, Wells was served by uh, three railways. Uh, one was uh, the Cheddar Valley Railway, which was a Bristol Ex and Exeter Railway. There was another service uh, running into Wales from Whitham, which is uh, on the uh, Weymouth Line, I believe, on the Bristol to Weymouth Line. And um, that ran into Wales. And there was a, a further line, which was run by the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway, which came up from the uh, Glastonbury to Wales. So at one point, Wales was served by three railway companies or three railway lines uh, eventually um, the, the track was rearranged so that uh, there could be through trains from uh, Yatton to Whitham station and uh, no uh, Whitham station no uh, Whitham station uh, that's in, uh, now uh, completely obliterated as far as I'm aware that's disappeared but you can see that in, in the DVD 
Okay, so you can imagine a, a group of passengers being carried on this uh, particular train and maybe our, our van full of uh, strawberries uh, to be uh, deposited on uh, onto Yatton uh, station. Now we're going we're to run our um, our 262 T in in, in a moment. I'm quite enjoying watching this one going around actually. So uh, this is a Backman model, the Backman. Uh, it's a split chassis locomotive as well, and you can see it's running quite well. It, it, it's one of my best runners. Really nice locomotive. Ivor Tank BR Late Crest 31452B. And it's, um, it's black with a white and red lining. Maybe we'll have a closer look at her in just a moment. We'll bring her in. Uh, the camera's on a tripod at the moment, so I'm a little, not very mobile with, uh, with my camera work. But we'll try and see if we can get her in somewhere to have a closer look. Uh, let's see if we can get in focus. Wow, look at that. There we are. You can see the lining on there. The red banding over the top of the boiler. And then the lovely lining of, of, on the water tanks as well. Really, really nice locomotive, this one. 41233. I can see that clearly enough. There. And that gives us a good opportunity to watch this locomotive uh, pull away. And then we can see the level of controllability that we can get with this uh, new Gage Master controller. Really nice. Now this, a lot of the archive footage which appears on the DVD was at a time of great upheaval in British Well. Like, like, as I mentioned before, and uh, by the time that they got to be filming it at Yatton Station, you didn't get to, I don't think you get to see any steamers going through. In fact, it was uh, dominated by the diesels. In fact, you do see uh, what we're going to be seeing next actually go flood thundering through Yatton Station. Okay, so our, our lovely Ivert uh, tank is going to be going into its uh, station now. And we can imagine it may be pulling into Yatton again. We'll change the points. See if I've not left it. See if I've got it right with the points. There we go. I think we can just right do it. Okay. And so what we'll do is we'll watch, uh, watch the train go into the station again. Now that is really, really nice control there. Look at that. Now, I got quite curious about Yatton Station because obviously I'd heard about the the, uh, the Cheddar Valley line. And um, if you're coming from Bristol, uh, um, going westward, sort of the towards the southwest, um, the old bay platform for uh, Yatton uh, from the to get the trains for the Cheddar Valley line at Yatton will be on the left hand side and I, I believe that's now a car park okay but we can imagine our train is now put into Yatton station and it's actually uh, delivering its um, band of happy passengers and also unloading the strawberries for transportation across uh, all, all over the country okay maybe they'll be going to Wimbledon uh, for um, for the tennis People, people do have their strawberries and cream at Wimbledon, don't they? Now the next locomotive we're going to see is what to replace the steam engines and it's this one. It's a warship. I'm just going to check, change over for the main line over here we have. 
I've been having a little bit of uh, memory loss with points lately and uh, one or two minor mishaps, nothing disastrous. So we'll just try and make sure we can keep the mishaps away tonight. There we are, we've got our points changed now. And then we can follow our, hopefully follow our um, warship out. Now this warship uh, is a mainline model. I don't, it's not been used for some time. And it has been, uh, it has had some uh, quite, uh, we, let, let's call it heavy repairs. Okay, so we'll just put the control into reverse. And if it does need a helping hand, please forgive me, but we'll see if it goes. I can hear the motor go in. There we are, we're away. Let's follow right to the station. Right, so there we go. Then we got our green warship diesel. Okay, so by the time the um, this this uh, video was filmed with archive footage at Yatton Station, you you could see warships and westerns go through. And in fact, you will in the, if you watch the DVD, you will see green warship and a maroon western. Uh, thundering through the station okay so that's what we're going to do without any further ado we'll let this one go round and we'll have a little talk about the uh, the warships just change the controller to forward we should be on the main line. Now something you'll probably notice about this one as it comes towards us, uh, the front's lit up. That's one of the attractions of the, of the main line uh, version of this. And for me it's worth it just to get the front lighting up. I know a lot of you uh, DCC boys have got all sorts of things going on with your trains, uh, you know, with lights and whistles and bells and things. But this is, um, you know, at, at the time of, uh, when, when I bought this particular model, this was more or less as good as it gets. Uh, the cab lighting up. Well, for me it was anyway. Now this one needed, uh, I bought this uh, toy and train fare and it needed some very heavy repairs. What had happened was the gears on the, on the driving axles, uh, one of them had split and gone. And, but you can actually buy replacements uh, for these now. Uh, they're actually 3D printed in, um, and they actually just press onto the axle, you press a new one onto the axle. What happens is there's a, a little pip on the on the cog and that causes it causes the the, uh, the cog to split and as you can see I've changed that now I've only changed one of the cogs so it's still a, a little bit noisy but it is not it's not going clonk clonk clonky clonky clonk 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 like it was and clonky clonk is uh, a good description of how it was running but as you can see I've got it more, more or less fixed up now and it's running quite well quite pleased with it now and it came unboxed and it had, and it does in some ways look like it's been through World War Three. And it's got the uh, steps that uh, snapped off uh, in one end. But then the, uh, the the Lima model it never never included steps. If you have a look at the Lima model and the Ombi Railroad version of this, there are no steps anyway. And it's one of those things you, um, you don't really notice too much as it goes round. And I'm, I'm quite fond of High Flyer really. And it, it was worth me spending the time actually taking it to pieces and actually getting the uh, getting the uh, axle repaired or at least the, 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 the cog that went on there, the drive gear. Now these came out in, in about 1958 if I remember rightly, the, uh, the warships and they were direct replacements uh, along with the western for the castles and kings. Now the kings were always drawn by 1962 and uh, steam ended on the western region of British Rail. It should have ended in, uh, in the end of 1965. That was called their D-Day or Diesel Day. We've been to great um, pro, you know, hurrahs and that sort of thing. But it was delayed. And uh, it was because the western region of British Rail had taken control of the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway. And the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway had to continue for a further two or three months until March 1966 with 
steam engines because the replacement bus service failed to materialise. Now one of the things you will see in this DVD is something rather sad. Uh, there is a, a steam, uh, sorry, I can't say a steam special. It, it's, it's, a, it's an actual uh, rail special and it's um, sort of a diesel train going down the uh, track and it does go over the Somerset and Dorset line. At the time that they actually filmed it, the Somerset and Dorset line, uh, Charlton Road Station uh, is all, it's all derelict, there's scrap cars there, the lines been all torn up. It's rather a sad sight to see. But it does give you an idea about what kind of times uh, this uh, DVD was actually uh, made, at the t you know, recorded, or when the archive footage was recorded. And for, for many drivers uh, coming onto diesels, it must have been quite a, a big sort of a steep learning curve, much as it is for me uh, filming these mod my model railway. Um, when you hit something new, there's always a steep learning curve, isn't there? But there we are, this nine flyer flying round. We're running quite well. I mean, I mean, okay, it's a bit noisy, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, but I'm very happy with it. And that's what uh, you need to get with, with, uh, with anything you do, is being happy. Okay, so we're going to run her in now. I'll be looking at our very, very last locomotive in just a few moments. Now, the last locomotive is going to be the Westerns. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, sort of the face of locomotives, really. And um, in some ways, the, uh, how the preservation movement uh, came about as well. Now, I'm going to run around one more time because I'm quite enjoying this. I don't get to run this one very often. Just put it up to the uh, to the signal there. There we are. I could I could have slowed that down a lot better with this controller, but I I did it quite suddenly then. Quick uh, quick turn off of the power. Okay, so we're going to bring her into the station. Now you can imagine this is we'll, we'll we'll have to kind of imagine this is the main line station. I know they're they're in separate parts of the of the layout, but perhaps we can imagine this is Yat um, main line station. Uh, yes, the mainline station wasn't an island. Uh, wasn't an island platform station, by the way. But we have to use a little bit of imagination here today or tonight. So in, in, in comes the train now. Now I don't know if these trains actually stopped at Yatton. Uh, certainly in, in the de in the actual video which uh, I bought. It, it does show these uh, locomotives actually flying through the station at speed. Now we're going to go forward, yep, we're going right. And you can tell power is going to this locomotive because it lights up. It's quite good. There we go, we're getting over the points, there we go. It comes a bit on points, but really I can forgive it that. There we are. I think we're in, in, in far enough. Oops. Now that bit of track on the end is a little bit dodgy, so please forgive me for the little jolt there. And maybe the helping hand just to bring it into the station correctly. That's not the fault of this controller. Uh, this locomotive, like I say, doesn't get run very often, and the track as well comes apart at the end of every running session. Uh, so you do get the odd kind of um, sort of like we uh, dodgy connection sometimes. But now we're going to have, go, have a look and see if we can uh, get our um, Western Courier running, which is the uh, Class 52. That's a Class 42. I think they were either Class 42 or Class 43, depending on where they were built. Uh, the first and second batch of these here. And then that's the Western, the Class 52 Western, which was the most powerful of the diesel hydraulics. So we'll just reverse her out. Then we we'll reverse. Uh, 
Okay. This is Western Quarry, our final locomotive. Now, we're getting to, near to the point now where I will be bidding you farewell for the evening. And, and uh, this might not be get onto uh, YouTube until Sunday, uh, because I, I need to get this onto the computer, uh, render, the, render the video, and uh, then get into a state where I can edit it, I put it all together and everything else. So it, do, it does take a little bit of time to do that, as many of you know, uh, fellow YouTubers. And we're just going to bring this into the forward gear now. And there we are, this is Western Western Courier. Again, one of the locomotives seen thundering through Yachting Station. Now, the Western region of British Rail, uh, when they were looking for a uh, replacements for their steam locomotives they were looking for a design of uh, a diesel they went to germany for their designs and they went for the diesel hydraulic design in fact they were the only region that did and it was in some ways the undoing of these locomotives um they were very good locomotives uh, there was a couple of things though which um just a sign of the time being more than more than anything else um because of the because they were running um, old coaching stock, they had to still heat the heat the train, and so these actually have boilers uh, built into the uh, built into the locomotives. Now those boilers for um, for heating the, the carriages, uh, they could sometimes be temperamental. Now when it got to, to the mid to the certainly the nineteen seventies. These locomotives were deemed as non-standard, and they were withdrawn. In fact, the, the warships went first in the early 1970s, and then the uh, the westerns, the Class 52 westerns, went by um, the middle of the 1970s. I think 1976, 1977, they were all finally withdrawn. Now they had a very, very loyal. They managed to get up a very, very loyal following. Uh, the diesel hydraulics. In fact, there are some in preservation today. And some are still running. I think there's one on the West Somerset Railway. Uh, might be that, actually that one may be on uh, <coughs> on loan there. But they, they do run the, the, the occasional diesel on, on the West Somerset Railway. And this is in B Armour Room, as you can see. They did come out in, a, in an experimental sand livery, a livery of desert sand as well. I think Western Enterprise came out in that. Now you can imagine this train uh, thundering on its way down to uh, down to the West Country, taking the happy passengers to their usual resorts of maybe Torquay, Paynton, maybe going on to Plymouth. And it must have been quite a, a, a time for the drivers. I mean, so, some of the drivers that uh, uh, would have been on steam locomotives have built up their career on steam locomotives and uh, reached the pinnacle of their uh, railway careers just suddenly find themselves uh, having to uh, relearn everything and then have to drive these diesels. Some people took uh, to it like a duck to water. A very useful book I would recommend is uh, Diesels of Driver's Reminiscences by L.C. Jacks. That's about J-A-C-K-S. You may find it. Um, I was fortunate to find it. And uh, he works on the diesels from the very, very first one. So he gives you a very, he gives you a very, very good uh, recollection, certainly of how he, these were like, what these were like. Um, to actually uh, drive. Apparently the, car, the cabs got very, very hot, but if you open up the window you get a hurricane in the cab, so you have to choose between having a, being hot or having a hurricane. Remember that when uh, British Rail, or the British, we the British Rail, were going over over to, uh, from uh, D, steam to diesel, they were on, 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 very, on very much a seat learning curve themselves. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bid you farewell now. Now certainly in the video, like I say, well, I'm right to include these because they, these were seen running through the station. There's a few, a lot of other things I could quickly, uh, quickly briefly talk about. Um, something is uh, in, uh, included in, in the uh, video is you get Cheddar Gorge with loads of coaches going up. Obviously that was a competition for the railways and <coughs> obviously cars and buses and coaches were, were, were the um, competition for lines like the Cheddar Valley. Okay, but a lot of these made their way into preservation. And I think uh, the scrapping of all the locomotives sort of uh, was a sudden wake-up call to the preservation movement. And they, I, it was a spur to action. In fact, a lot of people found themselves at uh, Dye Woodham's yard in Barry, um, chalking on the side, the, uh, you know, we're so-and-so locomotive society, please don't scrap this one, and, and things like that. And um, a lot of the locomotives, certainly of the steam era, found their way thankfully back into preservation and there's a healthy preservation society now and also for the diesels a lot of people are fans of the diesels too and uh, whatever you're a fan of whether you're steam diesel whatever railway certainly in modern railway terms i think we're all part of one uh, one great uh, wonderful community of people and uh, i hope tonight that this uh, video has may have been of great interest to you and um Maybe you might want to look up that DVD and, and give that a, a watch. And uh, if you need a new controller, the uh, Gage Master Combi controller is something worth considering. Okay, so anyway, thank you very much for watching. Now if you like what you see, press like and uh, subscribe, ring that bell. And thank you very much for, for your interest. And thank you very much and good night.